Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. New on Curiosity Stream, we've walked with dinosaurs. We've explored our prehistoric planet, and we were always told the same story. Extinction came from the sky. But what if dinosaurs survived? Amazing Dino World 2. Watch it now on Curiosity Stream. With monthly, annual, and bundle plans, find the one that works for you at curiositystream.com. Welcome friends, it's the Movie Boom Podcast. Podcast, enjoy the show. Zachy and Brian are talking about movie boots. Movie Boom Podcast on the radio. Welcome to Movie Film. It is episode 268. And as we record this, Brian Hall, my, I'm Zachy Hassan, by the way, Brian. I don't know if you oh. if we've met, but uh, it's nice to make your acquaintance. Yes, pleasure. Uh, uh, the, the, we're we're recording this on the very last day of April, and and I, this was like a moral victory for me because I was like I didn't I want I want to at least pretend that we we did record more than once this month. I know I know we we were just talking off air. Just this month was just like life. You know, life yeah. was just so so busy, and uh, but yes, we were we were clawing and scratching to make sure that we could at least get one more in this month. And it's funny because, yeah, I, I, Zachy knows I, I'm going to be rushing uh, my fiance to the airport shortly after this, too. So it was like, whatever window we got, we're going to take it and we're going <laughs> to run with it. And, and, and Brian will be editing the podcast while driving her. That's how dedicated. <laughs> That's true. So if you hear like uh, a lot of yelling uh, and screeching tires and, yeah. you know, police sirens saying, please, please pull over. Then, but, uh, and I love that Federico will be like, hey, do you want me to drive? And you're like, no, no, <laughs> I'm driving you <laughs> as you're steering into oncoming traffic. Yeah. What are you implying? <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, dedication. Yes. But what have you been up to, though, other than other than being crazy busy work? I, we should mention, by the way, that we are mere days away from the premiere of Star Wars, uh, The Young Jedi Adventures. I know. I cannot believe it single digit days brian it, it's crazy yeah may the 4th it comes out on disney plus and disney jr and uh as we speak there's a series of shorts that are currently available on disney plus and youtube and they've been getting great reactions so uh i mean it's it's been really exciting seeing people finally getting to meet these characters and see such amazing reactions to them already and um and and for all of us at the show, just seeing the show finally out in the world, you know, seeing ads ads for it on buses has been really exciting. We've been sharing pictures of our, our bus ad sightings. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a really exciting time, and uh, I'm looking forward to everyone finally getting to see episodes of the show, you know, full length episodes of the show, starting this Thursday, May the fourth. I, I I have to say. Um... My feeling is that it's not truly Star Wars until people on the internet say that it ruined the franchise. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and so I'm, I'm, I, I want to get that ball rolling. Honestly, I want to be the first person to tweet that after uh, the show starts. So uh, <laughs> just, just so we can all get that feeling, like, wow, we did it. We made something yeah, Star I, Wars. I, I feel like that's the equivalent of like breaking a bottle of champagne against the hull of a <laughs> ship. You know, I feel, like, <laughs> right. I, I feel like as a friend, I should do that. You know, that's what's been kind of fun too, because. I mean, here, I'll, I'll go on record here, <laughs> but, you know, with a show involving younglings, a lot of the the sort of people who think they're being clever online are like, oh, we all know how this ends. But uh, <laughs> this is in the High Republic, which is 200 years before, at least, you know, before uh, certain events involving one Anakin Skywalker. So uh, these kids are OK, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it has been fun. Like, you know, you see, you know, on Star Wars Instagram or whatnot, like there'll be, you know, a post about young Jedi adventures. And then someone says some sort of 
comment like that. And then there's immediately someone below like it's 200 years earlier, idiot, you know, or like, yeah, you know. they're going to they're going to die in plane crashes and of <laughs> disease and other things. Nothing to do with Anakin's <laughs> murder spree. That's right. That, that'll be the flash forward in the last episode. It'll be like the six, six feet under. Yeah, like, right like, where we see their ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, well, I was going to make a joke. I was just going to say, like, you know, we want a little insider tip. We already know what they all are. <laughs> but no, that would be awful. That's terrible. And make me sad. Um, <laughs> no, but um, man, yeah, we were we were out the other day and they were showing us like stickers. You know, we have stickers of these characters now. It's it's wild. And seeing the toys that are forthcoming, I think, in uh, summer. I like I, I just already can't wait to have the toys on my desk. So it's it's a really exciting time. Well, I'm, I'm sure we'll have uh, more to talk about when that series uh, officially debuts. Yep. Yep. Most definitely. Um. As for what I've been up to entertainment wise, crazily, not a not a lot, uh, at least movie wise. There's a lot in theaters that I want to watch. I want to see. I still want to see John Wick Four. I you know that the guy Richie presents the covenant or whatever that's called. I want to I want to see that. Yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, no, I can, I can see that. It looks like that'd be kind of good. And now I'm hearing like really great things about it. Yeah. And exactly. so I was like, oh, OK, well, I add it to the list. And then also uh, Return of the Jedi. I'd really love to catch that while that's in theaters this week. I've got some seats reserved and I'm hoping that, uh, uh, I'll be able to squeeze that in. I, 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 I asked my, my kids, I'm like, Hey, you guys want to watch return of the Jedi? And my first one's like, yeah, absolutely. My third one's like, definitely. My fourth one's like, Oh yeah, sure. Second one. He's like, why? Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, he doesn't live with us anymore. That's the <laughs> Hey, you know, teach their own. I, uh, that boy did, did, looked me in the face, Brian, and he <laughs> said, why? <laughs> no, that sounds on brand. We, 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 we I, hung recently. <laughs> I, I have never felt like more of a failure as a parent than in that moment. <laughs> did you say, I should no, say this, this, yeah. this is, this is you, you mentioned how you hung out together and, and you know, this kid, he's got a personality of his own now. And we, we had the opportunity to visit you very briefly and you, mm-hmm. Uh, did with my kids what you do with me where it's like hey let's drive by this location from this movie because i get real excited about that mm-hmm. uh, when i've hung out with you uh we, we 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 saw the the aqueduct like where they shot t2 yeah where the the truck goes over the edge and into the aqueduct yeah that's right and we we took a video there and of course uh, been to the mcfly house and and even uh the burger king that marty zooms past right so mm-hmm. so um uh my uh my kids uh, were there and federico is very nice about taking them out and just kind of keep, keep you know keeping them company for a couple hours so going to the mcfly house whatever and so the next day and and hamza my oldest he's like man that was so cool you know yeah uh my second one we're uh, you and we're all out for for a meal and we pull up to like an intersection and and my second one he turns to you and he goes hey look at that 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 uh, that no left turn sign that's the same one in back to the future <laughs> yes this he said kind of sarcastically dick, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was it was pretty funny though <laughs> I think I turned to you and I was like, so uh, it's like this all the time. <laughs> I'm like, can you dial it down to maybe a six? Dude, that was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> now, Federica had a blast hanging out with him, though, driving them around. She was. Oh, she I'm was glad. About it. Yeah. I'm glad someone did. Hey. <laughs> Cause, cause I, I, I spent uh, five hours coming and going with them. I'm like, okay, I'm done for the rest of the month. That was me. <laughs> Wait, oh, you know, that reminds me, uh, I had a lot of, uh, celebrity sightings this weekend. We were, um, we were driving down the street and I saw Will Forte. Okay. Or I was like, I think that's Will Forte. And Federica's like, well, let's go find out. So we like pulled over really quick and she's like, go, go see. And so I hopped out of the car and I didn't know what to do. So I like, were, were you like Stewie and family? Or he's like, Will, Will Forte. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Tom, Tom Bosley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think about that all the time, by the way. Um, <laughs> but, but so he was at a corner with what looked like a, a wife or girlfriend and a baby and a carriage. And they were talking to two people leaving a restaurant. So I, I sort of rounded the corner, heard his voice and was like, oh yeah, that, that is definitely Will Forte. And, uh, but then I was like, 
I mean, do I have to round the whole block to get back to Federica at the car? <laughs> or like, and so I kind of did this thing where I was like, what? The, oh, and like pat my p- pockets. Like I forgot something. <laughs> oh, geez. And then I like, turned around <laughs> and then ran back. And I was like, got in the car and I was like, yeah, that's him. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. And so then we, uh, we, we sat in the car and we watched him get in the car. So she got to see him too. And, <laughs> That's hilarious. And then we saw just today we were at uh, this taco place and we saw uh, Ryan Hansen, who's in like Veronica Mars and Party Down and Federica recognized him right away. And we're like, holy cow, what a weekend. <laughs> Sherman Oaks. It's all happening, folks. It's, it's a place to be. Yeah. And on that note, actually, uh, Friday night, we went to a TV taping. Like a sitcom, you know, where you mm-hmm. like a three camera sitcom studio audience laughing kind of situation. And it hasn't come out yet. And I think I'm not going to say what it is. Is it because... too many cooks? No, that would have oh. been incredible. <laughs> I, I yeah, That would have been amazing. But no, hey, I hey, but just Ryan, Ryan, hold on. Be honest. That song is in your head now, isn't it? Too many cooks. <laughs> I, you know, I've been thinking about rewatching that recently. Actually, that <laughs> came up not that long ago here. And I don't remember why, but that was such a weird phenomenon wasn't it yeah mm-hmm. like somehow that thing if, if people don't know what we're talking about on adult swim at like 3 a.m unannounced out of nowhere they aired this thing called too many cooks and it started off like it was going to be a tgif sitcom right it had that kind of corny opening and you know people kind of smiling and then looking at the camera and folding their arms and the the joke was that it just kept going and it kept introducing more people. But then there was like this serial killer who was introduced and then it turns into this weird, like David Lynch movie. <laughs> you know? yeah. I, mean, I mean, it is to think about it. It's like a nightmare. Like it is like, was that real or did I dream that after having like bad Mexican food, you know? Exactly. I mean, much like Lynch, like, not many people can do this, but yeah, it felt like they captured the feeling of a nightmare. Yeah. And, and what was amazing about it was I went into work the next day and I think I read about it online or something and I watched it. Uh, and then everybody at work was watching it. And then I remember we were in an editing session and all the writers of the show is on Bob's burgers, all the writers of the show everybody was talking about like all day. It was this thing. Everybody couldn't stop talking about. And I was like, wow, I, can't remember when something like that was unleashed in that way and it really grabbed everybody that way you know like that it's so rare to be able to do that but that was such a thing um but so so you did not attend a taping of too many cooks no no (laughs) this was this was like a very standard you know sort of it's it's not out yet but it's like an nbc for it's a multi-camera uh uh, laugh track sitcom yeah, and, and the reason I won't say exactly what it is is because maybe A, I'm not allowed, I imagine, and B, it was okay. Um, okay. <laughs> which, okay. And I only bring that up because our job is to sit, 200 people sit in these bleachers, and we have to laugh. Mm. for. And this thing takes four hours to record. So what's so fascinating about this for people who, who haven't gone, have you ever gone, by the way, to a TV TV? I have not. I have not. Okay. So you, you go to a studio and you know, you're waiting a line. I mean, this is the thing you get there, you show up, you wait in a line, you go into another line, you're like getting ushered in. So that's time consuming. And this is before the four hours it takes to tape. And so thankfully they give you sandwiches, you know, and, and water and things like that. But, uh, so you get in your seat and you're tired, you know, but your whole job now is to laugh at not only every joke in the show, but like jokes that may not really actually be that funny. And sure. so what's fascinating about it is there's a warm up person, like an MC who's with you the whole show. And in a way, they're really the star of the show because <laughs> like they, you spend the most time with them, you know, while they're moving cameras, setting this up, doing whatever. The majority of the time is this person. And he's been doing this since 1981. And I was like, if this guy wrote a book, I would read it. Uh, I can't even imagine all the shows he's worked on, all the things he's done. But he just goes up there and he just has this way of just making you laugh. He does like, you know, jokes, but he also does magic tricks. But he pulls people from the audience and he pulled he's like, who's, you know, who's from another country and come up here and like sing a song in your native language. And like he interacts with them and just keeps you engaged. And then all of a sudden it'll be like rolling. And he's like, okay, 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 okay. And then and then you sit down and then you watch it and they do these jokes that are okay, but you have to go, you know, 
dead. And you have to be like, <laughs> you know, it, like this <laughs> force. And it's like when it started, you're just kind of not in the mood. Like you're a little tired and, and it's, wow. it's kind of fascinating. And I was trying and, you know, the guy next to me wasn't laughing at all. And it's, it's, awkward it's kind of awkward and so then he'll come up and be like try to loosen you up and then he'll he'll find like these little inside jokes he'll make with you and then you start laughing really hard so then hopefully i think the thing is is that you'll get the giggles a bit sure and then and then it's funny because then they'll do the scene again and he keeps going you've never seen it before you've it's the funniest thing you've ever seen here we go <laughs> you know kind of a thing <laughs> it's just such a it's a fascinating process and it also kind of opened my eyes to television sitcoms you know which are 22 minutes long, but say, you know, the A story is, you know, the main story, most time amount, you know, we spend with a a story, but say the B story for this one was a guy finds a thing. It makes him sad about something from the past. And then someone does something nice for him to make him not feel so bad. And if you were watching it all mixed together in 22 minutes, it would feel like yeah, okay, that story, solid, woven in, beginning, middle, end, you feel good about it. But when you watch yeah. it broken up, you're like, wow, this is literally probably like four minutes of content, this whole <laughs> plot. And it just makes you realize like, wow, that is really short. But when it's all tied yeah. together, it somehow feels like a full episode of television, you know? Wow, okay. But, um, and also, actually, weirdly, more than the comedy, that plot, made me sort of like oh aw. and our audience did do that went oh and so then afterwards the mc comes up and he goes okay now laughter is great oz don't mix very well so we're gonna do the oz <laughs> later he's like so wow. hold, back, hold back your oz <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> isn't that funny um wow i, didn't I have to say I, I can hear already federica listening to this and probably laughing and rolling her eyes a little bit but w- the opening uh, cold open basically joke uh we saw it it's kind of funny. Then they did it again. They tweaked it. it. Got a little funnier. And then they did it again. And I don't know. It's like, even though it's not natural to laugh at something you've just seen three times straight in a row, you mm-hmm. just sort of get in the rhythm of it. And I just started clapping. And then the whole audience clapped. So wow. it was sort of like this ripple effect. Where, ah, ha, 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 ha. And then it like claps and then I'll go like the credits. And then I turned to Federica when that ended and I went, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I started that applause. <laughs> so I was like, Dance when it airs. Puppets. Yes, exactly. Or, or uh, it reminded me of Mr. Burns when he's got the baseball team. He's like, hit a home run, Daryl. And then he, Daryl hits the home run. And he's like, I did that. <laughs> um, but it's, so, it's a, let, yeah. let me ask you. I mean, yes. uh, I know you can't talk about it, but was this a pilot? No, it's the fifth okay. episode. They showed us the pilot. Okay. Um, and this was the fifth episode, so it's okay, not so, on yet. So it has been picked up to series. Okay. And, and, and you don't have to say who, but did you, uh, recognize anybody in it? Yes. I think, uh, one of the people was a draw particularly for Federica. So this was sort of like a surprise. Like I was like, Oh, this would, I see. she would love this. And so, um, but yeah, it was all very, you know, familiar people. Um, maybe I'll talk about it later when I don't feel it, it as connected. I just feel a little bad because I'm like, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> and I don't want to like <laughs> rag on it. But um, yeah, and and it was cool because then every now and then the people would come over and kind of interact with the audience. And that's, you know, it's kind of nice. It yeah. gets you reinvigorated yeah. a bit. But it's it's fascinating. I If anyone is into the mechanics of filmmaking and television and whatnot, I would recommend it as an experience just to be like, wow. I mean, for all these years, sitcoms, this is the... The nuts and bolts of it, you know, it's not as sexy as you think, but it's still kind of interesting in a way. Um, but it is, it's exhausting. It's absolutely exhausting. What, so. One one truism I've heard often is that the worst place to watch a sitcom is in the live studio audience. It's, it's wild. It's wild. I mean, it, it's just so unnatural, you know, I like when you go to a, a comedy club, you know, they some people they get you warmed up a little bit you have an i mean well likewise there was an mc here but there's like an mc to warm you up you know there's alcohol involved you get a little punchier throughout the night but it's it's hard to just go into a thing and and you're watching something that's a little you know it's kind of straightforward it's like a very you know like averagey sort of sitcom kind of thing and it's you might watch it at home and it'll be sort of comfort food like 
where like right. it's that's what I was sort of realizing. Actually, I had that realization there. I said, I don't I don't think sitcoms are actually always that funny, but they're kind of charming, mm-hmm. you know, so you're not laughing out loud at home, but you are charmed by it. And that's it's it's easy and it's nice and it's comfortable. But when you're there and you're supposed to laugh like it's the funniest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, it's not very natural. So it's it's a, it's an experience. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to finding out what what the show was that you saw. Yeah, yeah. But on that note, I'll just say uh, two things I have watched. Um, and since they aren't super current, I won't spend too much time on them. But uh, over here, uh, you know, we're always we have our own shows going. You know, at this, you know, I watch what I, things on my own. She watches things on her own. But we always try to have one show together. And we had done Parks and Rec. And that went over really well. We did Brooklyn Nine Nine. We didn't want it to end, and so we were like, "Well, all right, we're on a Michael Schur sort of uh, <laughs> a thon over here." And <laughs> Federica had been a huge fan of The Good Place, and we we gobbled that up. I mean, we just went through four seasons really, really quickly, and uh, I really loved it. I think it was her second second time, maybe even third time through it. But I it was my first time. And have you ever seen it? It's it's a really original, charming witty show yeah um have you have you gone through it uh, not the whole series i i'm about halfway through i think okay yeah no i just i i was really delighted by it. i mean it's these really really lovable characters and it's just so wacky i mean like just the the really really broad strokes are you know it's these characters who have died and they go to the good place is what they call it you know like heaven and and just all the potential you know that of episodes that you can have in a place like that. And there's a lot of sort of like philosophy. I imagine like philosophy professors would have a lot of episodes they could show as examples for certain people's, you know, you know, Kant or whoever, like just different. Oh, well, this is his philosophy on this. This whole episode is a representation of that idea, you know, um, sort of like the, the whole thing about like being on a train, you know, full of people, but there's one person on the track. What do you do? Do you save the person on the track and kill the five people on the train or vice versa? And, you know, they personify that stuff. And so it's, it's just kind of a fun. Um, and then, and what I think was nice too, is when you go through a show, yeah, there's peaks and valleys and seasons that aren't so great, but this is like a tight four seasons. I thought it was pretty solid all the way through. And it actually really sticks the landing. It has a really solid, emotional, satisfying ending. And it, you know, you just, uh, you don't see that often. And so it was, yeah. that was a good one. Just wanted to shut that up. So, so what's, what's next for you? I don't know. We talked about Shit's <laughs> Creek, which I have not seen. Um, another sort of, you know, kind of, I think as I understand it, sort of folksy feel good comedy. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, but, uh, but I can speak to on my own and I know we can uh, bond over this, but now I am on the most current season of Yellowstone. Um, I have burned through that show. That's why I haven't so seen a lot it, of movies. Has it held up for you? It has. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, I've said it before, but my brother put it perfectly. It's like an AMC series meets a USA series where sometimes, <laughs> right? Like sometimes it'll be like really deadly serious and um, not trying to please anyone, just telling like a hard story. But then sometimes it'll get a little soapy, you know, yeah. and a little sort of uh, not predictable, but you're, you know, it's, but that, that can be satisfying in its own way too. You know, you want to be taken on these certain rides and romances and ups and downs. But um, yeah, for me, I, I, uh, I'm a little sad that I'm almost caught up. I, I, this season, I guess they're doing one of those things, right? Where they season five is split up over two years, you know, which is yeah, <laughs> right. Like why? <laughs> very annoying. But, um, <laughs> but uh, it, what's, what's, uh, for people who haven't watched it, what could be relatable about this is watching this show has been a journey because I started it on, I want to say Peacock season one. No, no, I'm sorry. Right. Paramount, I think. And then for the middle seasons, I had to go over to Peacock. And then for this most current season, I had to go to my YouTube TV and subscribe to the show. And now I can only watch these episodes with commercials, which I know first world, but it's like, (laughs) it's it's very annoying after watching, you know, four seasons without them. Um, But, and then also knowing that there's this, you know, production drama where they haven't even started filming the second half of this season. So it's a little like bittersweet, like reaching this point, but, uh, I'm still devouring it. Um, where are you at with it? it? 
it, it, I'm, uh, uh, I believe part way through the third season, I had, I've had to take a bit of a break because th- this past month has been just sort of, uh, an aggregate of just like one, one, uh, a crisis after another, you mm-hmm. know, different degrees of crisis, but collectively it's a, it's a crap load of crises. Right. And, you know, so I've just, I, it, it's something that, that my wife and I watch together and it's just, we've just not had the time. So I'm actually kind of, you know, in the next couple of weeks, my semester is winding down and I'm actually just looking forward to that. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to have a morning, I can have a uh, chai with Amina. We can watch mm-hmm. our Yellowstone. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. Now, now that being said, I, I've told you for a little while now that uh, you've got a couple of really good prequels uh, in the wings waiting for you. That makes me really happy knowing that they're at, at the very least I have more uh, once I yeah. burn through this first half of season five. Like in, in the current, I believe, no, I think it was in the fourth season. You see the Tim McGraw character. Yeah. There's some flashbacks, which by the way, I didn't even realize the, the faith Hill, you know, yeah. was in there. Yeah. And I, I, all I thought was, I know her, but I, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't place her. So I didn't realize that they were sort of, that was the, they were working to a spinoff there. Yeah. So I think that's kind of cool where, you know, historically those flashbacks are set after, uh, 1883. Mm -hmm. And so you get to watch that series with some knowledge of where things are headed, which I think, I think is Mm. kind of cool, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to discussing those with you. Yeah, me too. Me too. Lean on us. We are here for you. You matter. You are not alone. Are you feeling overwhelmed? Not sure where to turn? The National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is there for you 24 7. Call or text 988 or chat at 988sc.org. Whether you're having an emergency or you know someone who needs support now, they can help you take the next step towards finding hope and healing. There is hope. 988sc.org. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. How long was Neil Armstrong actually on the moon? When did Europe start speaking English? Did Marco Polo really go to China? CuriosityStream is the streaming service for all things history, plus science, wildlife, and more. What's the real story behind the Mona Lisa? We've got that. What caused the collapse of Rome? We know. Where did we find mankind's earliest ancestor? Come find out. For the holidays, get the gift of curiosity with 25% off gift cards for your curious cohorts. It's holiday shopping season at curiositystream.com slash gift. But uh, what about you? Um, well, in, in the realm of streaming series, I finished uh, season three of Star Trek Picard. Yes, tell me about this. I, I've seen nothing but good things about this season. People seem to be really happy with it. You know, this third season, it's uh, executive produced by Terry Metellus, who, who, uh, he, before, before he was involved with Star Trek Picard, he, he was, was EP of 12 Monkeys, the series. Right. Okay. I had a friend that worked on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was a really good series. Yeah. I, and I didn't see it. I feel terrible saying that, but yeah. It, it was really good. And, and so he came into this as a Star Trek fan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the first two seasons of this show, have a sort of a mixed reception from fans. And I think part of the reason is because Patrick Stewart, in order to get him on board for this thing, he basically was like, I don't want to wear a Starfleet uniform and I don't mm-hmm. want to be on a starship, which like uh, uh, respect for, for, you know, the, the delicate genius that is Patrick Stewart. But I'm mm-hmm. like, if you're on a Star Trek show, that's sort of what people pay the freight for. Right. Right. And so I think that as a result, the previous two seasons were, were, you know, they feel like sort of an adjunct to the thing, you know? Sure. And, and I was like, well, this is the show. Like it's either this or no show at all. And I'm like, well, this is the one that Patrick Stewart wanted to do. So I didn't, I didn't think 
of it much past that. I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, it is what it is ups and downs, but whatever. But anyway, with the third season, Terry Metellus basically was like, look, I want the finale to the next generation that we never got. Mm. Um, you know, the, the original crew, you know, in the sixth movie that got to be their farewell. And you, you and I, we watched that together, you know, it ends with them, you know, their signatures on the screen and, you know, it's like, this is it. We're done with this now. Right. It was a farewell. The next generation never got that. So in essence, this, this third season of Star Trek Picard is the fifth next generation movie. Mm. And it, it brings back the whole, the whole cast and crew and it really gives a, an adventure together. And, and, you know, watching this, I'm, I'm somebody who I, I grew up watching the next generation and then my kids grew up watching the next generation. So this was something that was equally uh, poignant for, for myself and my children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You That's know? nice. Yeah. Right. And, and they were like fully on board with it. And, and, you know, I should mention a couple of years, it's been like six years now, but I took them with me to uh, uh, Silicon Valley Comic Con and, you know, they met Jonathan Frakes and Brent Spiner and Marina Sirtis and, and they were all so nice to them and they have these, these warm memories just associated with that, you know? That's great. But we get a scene where all the crew finally comes together. It's, you know, over the course of the season's episodes, this is like maybe episode six or whatever. And they're all sitting around the conference table, like they used to in the old show. And they're like, man, how long has this been? That's what the characters say. And, and I was like, you know, it's amazing how it feels like every legacy sequel since the star Wars sequels is a response to the star Wars sequels. Hmm. Because you look at all these characters sitting around the table. You're like, you know what? That's what we wanted. Right, right, right. We just right. wanted that. We wanted them to be there with each other and to share in each other's friendship because we feel like we are friends with them. Right. And, and you know, to to a to a to a lesser extent, I point to you know Jurassic World uh, Dominion, the last one. Which say what you will about the movie, you know, we got the band back together, we got them to do stuff together, and and that was very much by design. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, they say in life, you're either an example to follow or a warning to avoid, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and it's like a shame that it's like, you know, unfortunately, uh, the star Wars sequels, like they, they robbed us of that thing that, that all of these other things feel like a response to at least maybe, maybe, maybe I'm over analyzing, but it feels like that to me. Yeah. No, no, no. You know? Um, so, so definitely for fans of Star Trek and fans of the next generation, if you've held off, man, you got this great season of television. That's just, I I've said it before. Uh, it is, it's just a gift, man. That's, I'm, that's amazing. I mean, how often do people accomplish that? Yeah. You know, you know, like if we never see those characters again, I'm like, you know what? We got to say goodbye. Mm-hmm. And, and what, what, what better, what better thing is there than that? You know, that's great. Uh, another thing I've seen recently is on, on a slightly different tip. This is uh, Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, I saw your review. I actually I don't know if I read it though. Um, <laughs> I am so curious because uh, knowing the and listeners know we're not horror guys, so yeah. I'm very very curious what your uh, thought on this was. You know, it's it's funny because I'm I'm not. Like I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't seek out horror movies, but I've said on this show, I'm like, look, I'll go watch them and I, I can appreciate good ones. Uh, I, and I like the evil dead uh, films, the Sam, the Sam Raimi ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one did not do a ton for me. And, and this is sort of like, it's not really a sequel to the, the, the Raimi movies. It's not really a sequel to the, the, the remake by, by Fidi Alvarez like 10 years ago. Uh, it sort of exists within that world. So it's, it's, hmm it's calling on the mythology, but it's kind of doing its own thing. And, and it is extremely gory and I can, I can go along with gore. I don't mind that, but I, there was, there was like a, a cruelty to mm-hmm. it that I found really off putting. Right. And you know, there's, it, you have, uh, these uh, characters who are in this building that's, that's going to be, uh, that, that, that's condemned, you know? And so they're in the process of moving out and then there's like an earthquake and they, they stumble upon the, you know, the Necronomicon, which if you <laughs> follow this stuff, it's, it's the book made of, of human flesh, mm-hmm. uh, which you shouldn't open. But of course people in horror movies 
who have never seen horror movies are my worst kind <laughs> of, of horror movie characters. Let me, let me open this objectively terrifying thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, uh, you know, as the title implies, uh, uh, the dead rise and they may or may not be evil. <laughs> and, and for me, like there, there's one scene, like it's staged very well. I think it's, I think, I think um, the, the, there's some cleverness to the, the way in which, the the carnage is depicted sure uh the 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 film itself is is um directed by uh lee cronin his british filmmaker and you can tell he's he's a fan he's an evil dead Mm -hmm. but like so you have this scene where like characters are looking through a keyhole yeah not a keyhole sorry like what do you call those peepholes you know in a in a door oh like at a door yeah yeah in in into the hallway and so it's like a pov through the the peephole as this this deadite is just massacring people right so you you're like, that's clever. Like it's a clever way of staging that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, you literally during the sequence, you have, you have, uh, children being horribly murdered. Mm. And I'm like, I just, I'm, I'm, I can't find the entertainment value in that, you know? Yeah. It, I, see, I'm, I'm the same. Like that just, I just, it doesn't entertain me that. Um, but I, there are certain horror films I do enjoy. Like, I mean, I love the scream movies and actually I saw that they're going to do another final destination. And I was like, sign me up. (laughs) (laughs) I like those, but yeah, no, I'm with you. Like those things, they just don't bring me even like a wicked pleasure, you know, or sort of like a, the fun of looking through my fingers as I'm covering my face. Like that's, you know, (laughs) it's not our flavor. Now, now that all being said, I am, uh, in the minority when it comes to evil dead rise so i Mm. if you're listening to this and and you know uh where i come from when it comes to horror movies then feel free to ignore what i just said yeah that'd be funny it's just like oh they hated it it's like we're gonna love it (laughs) yeah sign me up exactly yeah Yeah. uh fidi alvarez by the way who did the the remake 10 years ago he's doing uh the new the next whatever alien movie interesting and i i don't know if that's uh like a Hulu joint, like, uh, like prey. Oh, um, okay. Oh, but, Fox. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's going to be theatrical or streaming, but, uh, it, it is, uh, it is in production. And I was like, Oh, that's kind of interesting. I, I assumed that uh, the last one, alien covenant killed it dead. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, <laughs> I forgot about those. I was thinking yeah. of, uh, aliens four or whatever it was. <laughs> that or five. Too. I don't even remember. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I mean, um, yeah, I'm always game. I'll, I'll always check out that world. I'm, I'm curious about that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I've also seen Brian and this is, I can't really talk about it cause I'm going to wait to talk about it with you, but I have seen guardians of the galaxy volume three. Ah, I'm so excited. I really want to do a rewatch. Yeah. Uh, I've, I love one. I've seen it uh, a couple times. Uh, second one I've only seen once. I would yeah. like to revisit that, uh, you know, for the wind up to, to, fully enjoy three so well one thing i will say about three and and this does not constitute a spoiler but i'm i only in terms of you know the critique which has been very prevalent about uh marvel films lately is sort of the there seems to be a slapdash feel to the effect sequences Mm. uh we 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 at least thought it, we may have commented about it when it came to Ant-Man and the Wasp last one. And then, you know, even, even Thor, um, the love and thunder and watching this, it, it felt different. Hmm. And, and then, and then I read a, a an interview, like I just had this, like, oh, no, you know, there, there's, 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 there's intentionality behind all of this. Mm-hmm. And I read this interview with, with James Gunn, I'm assuming at the premiere, which is a couple of days ago. And he was talking about how, he he doesn't start shooting until he's had a completed script for six months. Huh. And he's like, we can make changes here and there, but like, I know when I, when we go in, when, we, when we're on the set, I know what I want the sequence to look like. I already know it. Right. And I'm like, well, that seems obvious. Yes. <laughs> like just as a course of act, well, that should be the way it should be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A vision. But I'm like, a vision <laughs> of all things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I'm like, but, but clearly that is the case based on the fact that I had that reaction where I'm like, mm-hmm. these effect sequences that they, they, they flow and they don't seem, um, you know, thrown together. And I'm like, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to tell, uh, the folks at Marvel how to do their jobs, but I'm like, maybe, uh, 
maybe have it figured out six months out. I don't know. Just say, just I know. put that out there. I mean, there's so many factors, right? I mean, it's it's funny too because it's it's not necessarily like the blame lies with the VFX houses. I mean, those people no, are not working at all. their asses off, you know, and right, right. under as I'm to understand it, not great conditions, but it's just like, yeah, there could be like tinkering up to the very last minute and whatever. And I mean, that's like blockbuster filmmaking. Unfortunately, you know, it, these rush times and dates and, you know, releases and whatnot. But I mean, um, I mean man, if you there's, can... there's, there's tinkering and then there's having to, to, to uh, produce from a whole cloth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like that was this... kind of our thing with Ant-Man where we, we felt like, yeah, it kind of feels like they were, pointed in this direction but then at the last minute mm-hmm. they pivoted for some reason yeah um but that's i anytime someone is able to have the the luxury of making the movie that they've settled on in their mind and are passionate about i mean that's fantastic yeah. so yeah i i i'm looking forward to discussing i i um and this isn't even like a fully formed thought but as we record this, this weekend, we are now five years after Infinity War. Wow. Half a decade. So we, we've we now caught up to the, the blip. Ah, you're right. <laughs> right? But I was like, it it feels like th- there is almost like a cultural acknowledgement that the MCU is not the king of the castle anymore. Sure. And, and that's okay. Like not, not that the quality is down or whatever, but like that, you know, the, the peak was end game mm-hmm. and there will be other peaks after, but we're never going to necessarily hit that peak ever again. And, and speaking of that peak, I mean, it was just this long, consistent, steady run of films that culminated in an awesome way. I mean, that, when has that happened before? When will it happen again? I mean, that is in some ways lightning in a bottle, right? Yeah. I mean, just the, from what, 2008 to what was it? 19 or something or 18 or whatever it is, you know, 2019, when that ended? Yeah. 2019. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely have to acknowledge that that's crazy. They pulled that off to begin with, but then after something like that, and that, that we could depend on them for so long, you can't help, but feel like, Oh, it feels a little wobbly these days you know it's yeah and 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 just to be clear what i'm saying is is not even like oh it sucks now you know but it's like it's it's like uh you know it's like star wars right where it's never gonna be what it was yeah uh at its peak like you know every movie comes out and it just sucks up all the oxygen well Uh star wars is a different thing now Mm -hmm. right it's one thing among money many and, and you know that that's not that's not any kind of reflection on the quality of the output, but it's just like, it's one thing among many and, and Marvel is there now. And I think, I think that the, the fandom and the audience will always be there, but you know, I, I'm kind of glad that there's other things uh, to, to suck up some of the oxygen too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but that's a conversation that we will, we will uh, expound on. I suspect next week. I can't wait. (laughs) <laughs> I'm a big fan of the series, so I'm looking forward to it. Hey, well, what did you think of the Diplomat? By the way, I'm interested in that. I'm I'm a sucker for like politics shows, uh-huh. know? and so this one dropped on. It, I saw that it was coming, and so I actually I messaged my editor and I was like, "Hey, can I review this?" You know, mm-hmm. and so it stars Carrie Russell, who we just saw in Cocaine Bear. That's right. She's having a moment, uh, and and she pl- she plays an American diplomat who is supposed to be the ambassador to Afghanistan, and then she ends up at the last minute assigned to to the United Kingdom. Hmm. And there's various political machinations going on that lead to that uh, assignment. And her husband is himself a former ambassador. He's played by Rufus Sewell. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm by the way when it comes to Rufus Sewell, I'm like put Rufus Sewell in everything. <laughs> yeah. I just love Rufus. I think he's good in whatever he does. And so he's like kind of ambitious as well. Cause he, he wants to have a career also, you know? And, and I was like, okay, well this, this seems like a kind of a house of cards type thing, you know? Yeah. But what I liked most is that it is not house of cards. Mm. It's, it's almost like the inverse and opposite of house of cards because house of cards is so like cynical 
mm-hmm. and just like everybody's in it for themselves and everybody sucks and you know and this is i mean it's not the west wing where it's this pollyanna-ish take on it but it's not it's not house of cards either so it's kind of like in the middle right and you know the, the it it really foregrounds the idea of politics is the art of the possible mm. you you put people in a room you talk things out you can arrive at solutions you know right and i think that's what spoke to me about it that's what i liked um, yeah i i heard someone talking about it and i heard that it was from someone from the west wing and homeland that's, right. yeah. that's and right. i was like and it oh. feels it 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 is exactly like that's what it feels like Hmm. It feels like you put both of those things in a blender, you get this. So hearing that, hearing that it's pretty solid and that there's only eight episodes, I'm like, yeah, I can get down with that. That sounds, that sounds, sounds good to me. I, I would say so. I don't, I don't think you'd regret it. Yeah I, yeah, I think for me, what I found most interesting was the dynamic between the husband and wife who, huh. as the show starts, they're in the process of divorcing. Oh, okay. And then circumstances sort of prompt them to not be able to right and and just their relationship i found so interesting because i'm like it's not like it it's complicated you know Mm -hmm. it's not like oh he's cheating on her and she's it's there's various other factors and i'm like it's those complications that sort of pull me in Mm -hmm. um and i carrie russell i mean like she's just quality like you know you're gonna get a certain level from her you know yeah uh so yeah i really enjoyed it i'd love to hear your thoughts yeah, yeah, hopefully, maybe after Yellowstone. You know, one thing I also I'll say about the show is that uh, Michael McKeon is the president. And oh, interesting. He's, he's doing like a Joe Biden rip. Okay. And I was like, when you think about it, it's kind of funny how during the Trump years, they just, they didn't even attempt to have like a Trump character. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of a good point. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny. It reminds me back in the the years of twenty four, like the different presidents, where there'd be the, mm-hmm. you know, there was like the heroic, you know, President Palmer, you know, and then there's sort of like the guy that's like a little more Weasley and kind of annoying, and then you know, it's yeah, and that was kind of fun in that time, but like now, yeah, it just feels like you spend so much time in the news and on snl and and whatever in that that it's like i almost don't want that seeping into my entertainment i want it to be something else you know yeah yeah Yeah. that's exactly it yeah let's take a short break and we will come back with some listener letters why don't more infant formula companies use organic grass-fed whole milk instead of skim why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart, an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super, super food on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins actually found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S.-made formula to use organic, grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We even conducted the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in a quarter century, with clinically proven benefits like easier digestion, less spit-up, and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. And we make our own formula in the U.S.A. and our very own factories in Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. Every day my employees get scam emails. I wanted to protect my business and clients, so I checked out CISA's Secure Our World. They've got four simple ways we can protect our businesses from online threats. Learn more at cisa.gov forward slash secure our world. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. And we are back. And hey, we got a listener letter here, Brian. 
This is from Mark Lachance, who emailed us at moviefilmpodcast at gmail.com. And he says, uh, just wondering what your thoughts were on the future of physical media, given Netflix's recent announcement that they will finally end DVD by mail service. Yeah. Are DVDs, yeah, I think after 25 years. That is wild. I didn't even realize what? they were around that long. I, I, that was my thing. I didn't know they were still doing it or that they had started that long ago. So go figure. Yeah. Um, Mark asks, are DVDs slash Blu-rays completely obsolete now with the proliferation? Let me try that again. Proliferation. There you go. Uh, I shouldn't drink before I get on mic. Uh, of streaming services, or will they make a comeback with movie buffs like Vinyl did with audio files? Lastly, what is your preference for your favorite films? Streaming or Blu-ray? Keep the shows coming. Uh, thank you, Mark. Yeah, thanks, Mark. That's a great question. Uh, Brian, uh, what do you, what do you think? Um, I love the whole idea about, well, you know, could there be a comeback like vinyl and man, you know, I wonder actually it's, I mean, I think it'll take time, right? People have to miss it for a minute and then realize the benefits they're missing out on. Like I think with, I mean, I've, I've said on the show before, I like vinyl. I've become one of those people (laughs) and, um, but I do both, you know, like I, I, I stream music sometimes, but like when I'm in, you know, when I'm writing or I'm at home or like, especially at Christmas time a lot, for some reason, like when you're doing things around the living room, I like to put on like a Christmas record or something like there's something fun about the, the physicality of it, of like choosing what I'm going to do and pulling it out of its sleeve and putting it on. And even when I'm writing, I listen to star Wars soundtracks on vinyl when I, when I write and interesting there's something fun about flipping them. I I don't know how to explain it, but sometimes I, it's more convenient if I'm going to go up, you know, outside and I want a speaker and you just play something through your phone, you know? So there's gotta be something that we miss about it. And I think there is with, with, with the Blu-rays, I got to admit, I, I guess this bleeds into the other question my choice these days, I have not bought a Blu-ray in a very long time. I think the last one that I bought was probably Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And okay. that that was like the last movie that made like a huge impact on me where I was like, I want to see all the special features. You know, it kind of had this like limited edition special thing. So it felt like, oh, that's something I really like. And I'd like to get this special sort of thing that's on the shelf next to the, the other movies that kind of mean a lot to me. So, but I have not bought anything since. And I can't say that I've really missed it either because That's even right. when there's a movie that Federica and I are going to watch and I own it, even if it's like star Wars, like return of the Jedi or something, we'll probably pull it up on a streamer. You know, it's just click, 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 you know, instead of yeah. like finding it on the shelf, putting it in, going through the, the FBI warning, going through the menu. I mean, it sounds so ridiculous, but it's true, you know, like it, and having it boot up in the machine, um, so yeah, my choice these days, I have to admit, actually, I was going to rewatch Sorcerer, uh, which uh, shout out to one of our <laughs> listeners, Doug, because he he just saw that in a theater and we were conversing about that online, but he he made me want to rewatch it and I have it on Blu-ray and I bet you I will probably turn the PlayStation on and see where it's streaming, uh, which is sad, <laughs> but that's <laughs> that's my choice. And so I think it's the easiest, it's the quickest, it's convenient. I'm curious what you think. I mean, do you think there will be a moment when people will then sort of, there'll be like a resurgence? I mean, if, if that does happen, my feeling will be, it has to do with the things that it can, uh, like the bonus features, the director's commentary, the things that have not seemed to carry over into streaming. Right. Um, that, that's what I miss. You know, like that's if there was any reason for me to buy a Blu-ray about if there was some new movie that I was really passionate about. And I don't know what that'd be, but like this year and it came out and it was going to be available on streaming or they're going to put a Blu-ray and it was going to have like two hours of worthwhile bonus content and a director's commentary I was interested in. That would make Mm -hmm. me buy it. But I that's probably the only thing these days that would make me do that. I think you're speaking to just sort of the, the broader reality, which is that ultimately convenience wins uh, yeah. when it comes to, right? Like w- physical media was the only available way mm. to access 
these things that we want to watch, right? And we can talk about how in the streaming age, there are certain titles that are getting left by the wayside and yes. you know, that aren't that aren't making the jump to streaming. And and I, I'm fully on board with that. I say, yeah, that's a shame. Yep. But that doesn't undermine the central reality, which is that again, convenience wins. You know, if if I can access a movie on my phone and either stream it or, or download it to my portable device and watch it in a parking lot, you know, well then that's what more people are going to do. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, and then there, that's not even including the, the matter of the footprint that stuff leaves when it comes to storage. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I, I think that, uh, I have a pretty sizable collection of physical media which if i'm being honest i view very very rarely and i kind of i have it in my head like oh i still want to have x thing on disc Mm -hmm. even though pretty much if i own the disc i definitely have it in my in my voodoo locker Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know like i i we're talking about marvel earlier like i have the first three phases of marvel so up through i think spider-man uh, far from home, I think on 4k disc mm-hmm. as God is my witness. I've never once cracked any of those discs <laughs> and, and, and put them in my, in my Blu-ray player. Right. Right. You know, I've got a 4k, pl- I've got two 4k players in my house and, and I use them in any given month. I can, I can count on one hand, the number of times I actually use them to, to play a disc. On that note, if I can just add real quick, I I bought a PlayStation Five because that was the only way you could play Fallen Order Two. Uh, right. They're not putting it on four, so I was like, okay, well, here's now now I make the leap. But the the funny thing is, they make you choose if you buy one that has a disc drive or no disc drive. Hmm. And I had to consider, right? I was like, well, wow. I almost don't want the option. Just tell me, <laughs> you know, just, yeah, just right. make one available. But I was like, well obviously there are game factors in there. Like if you want to buy used games or, or that sort of thing. But I did think, you know, I used my PS4 as a Blu-ray player. Mm-hmm. Will I use the five as a 4k player? And if you had asked me maybe three years ago, I might've said, yeah, I, I assume I will. But mm-hmm. now I was like, yeah, probably not. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I don't know. That That's the thing, you know? So, so, you know, I've currently, I've got, I've got one, two, three, three shelves of TV on DVD. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just being honest, I, I, I don't watch most of those, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's sort of like I'm hanging on to them, but I don't know why I'm hanging on to them. Yeah, sure. Well, I did <laughs> yeah. that when I moved a couple years ago, I, had to confront this entire bookcase of things that I had. I love Blu-rays and DVDs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to work at a couple studios. And so I got a lot of things for free. And it's not even stuff that you like are like love, but it's like, it's just cool that they gave it to you almost, you know, like, right. and, and so you're like, yeah, of course goes on the shelf. But I had to really look at it and be like, no, really. I mean, I'm making this move. Is this the moment where I comb through this? And I did, right. you know, I, I, I probably cut it at least in half. Um, hmm. you know, but I mean, there are certain ones that I will always hang on to, like, you know, Terminator right. two is always going to be on my shelf and like star Wars and Indiana <laughs> yeah, Jones. But, but I, but I think that list is a lot shorter than we think. Oh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, I do love, and it, it goes back to, well, there's just something about ha- weird. I don't know how to explain it, a collector mentality or something, but, but like having those on the shelf, there is that weird psychology to it, but also, I think of Terminator two where I don't know when streaming what's available, but those discs are actually really cool. And there are, you know, there's a a Cameron commentary on there. That's very, very good. And I don't know if I'm ever going to listen to it again, but like I do appreciate with the films that I'm passionate about having all that extra stuff. Cause I am the type of person that will watch those things. So I I definitely agree with that. Yeah. So, so I think the, the question of, of, Physical media. I think I, I go back and forth on it, but, but the funniest thing to me is when I have this conversation with people who are like, well, w- what are you going to do if there's a nuclear war and you're not able to watch your disc or, or to stream it? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to be able to watch my disc either. 
Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I feel like you're asking the wrong question after uh, nuclear war. <laughs> well, I'll use it as a plate, you know, yeah. uh, to eat whatever. I'll be using the disc to reflect the sun so I can cook the rat that I <laughs> yeah. eat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, th- so that, that is, I, I, I th- again, I, I think it's just a, a reflection of, of the reality. And the other thing I'll say is that, you know, the majority of people didn't upgrade past standard DVDs. Yeah. Right. Much less Blu-rays, certainly much less 4k discs. Right. Right. And so given that, and you know, I, I've, I, I'm maybe, I'm only speaking for myself here, but I have a pretty good internet connection and I'm able to stream 4k movies pretty well. Mm -hmm. And sure. The discs look better, Hmm. but it's like a difference of degrees and that those degrees aren't enough to to overcome the hassle of having to get up and do what I mean (laughs) versus just versus just hitting the button. So I think, I think that's where most people are. Yeah. Yeah. But going back to the whole vinyl of it all, I, I imagine for almost anything like that. I mean, like I've seen that tape cassettes have come back and, um, well, that's stupid. I, mean, <laughs> that, I I'll admit <laughs> I, I have, I am not into that, but like if, if people enjoy that sort of cracking open the, the jewel case and the, I, that makes sense to me because I have that for other things. Although that was probably one of the worst sound quality, <laughs> you know, sort of, uh, uh, mediums available, you know, I mean, for really getting into it, I mean, CD is probably the best, but like, but people just have those attachments. So I, I think that, yeah, I, I imagine there will always be at least a community that is interested in those sorts of things for movies. Well, uh, there we go. Thank you, Mark, for uh, writing in with that question, and and yeah. I'll just put it out there to to the to the, the gathered masses. I mean, what are your thoughts? Maybe maybe we're completely wrong on this. I would, yeah, I I would love to hear much more <laughs> about this. I'm very interested. Uh, with that, let's take another short break. We'll come back and talk through some headlines. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino. With cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you Lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. And uh, we are back. And hey, uh, this past week, Brian, has been CinemaCon. That's right. Do, do you know anyone who went to CinemaCon? I have in the past, but those people's jobs have changed. And so sometimes they bring me back bags, like a Jurassic World bag, you know, and those sorts of things. But uh, no, not this year. Not this year. I never heard any reports from the ground. You? Uh, I just, you know, Chris Bumbre, uh went, I think. He's the he's the editor-in-chief of uh, Joe Blow. Mm-hmm. I like his reviews. Um, so, yeah, he, he writes good. He, he, he took over after our friend Paul Shirey uh, mm-hmm. vacated that slot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, various other people who I follow, uh, kind of doing their, their blow by blow, you know, Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, this is essentially there. They promote, uh, you, you have the, uh, the theater chains are, are being sold the, the goods for the coming year by Hollywood. Right. So it's a whole dog and pony show. They have to bring out the stars and talk things up. So, you, you know, you have like uh, Fast and Furious is coming out and Barbie and, and Indiana Jones. I think Harrison Ford was there and, and uh, the flash, they should, they screened the flash in its entirety. Yeah. Yeah. Which apparently that was the move last year that Top Gun did where it's like, you know, not only did we make a sequel, you thought uh, 
you know, it would never be made, but uh, get a load of this. You know, it's kind of like the get a load of this screening. And this year it was for the flash. <laughs> they, they did that with the uh, Ghostbusters afterlife two years ago as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and the thing with the flash is, you know, it's been really uh, sort of precarious over there with Warner brothers with them completely just throwing uh Batgirl into the trash bin. Right. And so, but with the flash and all the problems that they've had with that movie, WB is sort of maintained like, yeah, but it's really, really good. <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. Right. And so this yeah. was the, the putting their money where the mouth is. Um, I mean, all sort of controversies, and whatnot aside, not, you know, n- no disrespect to all, to all that. That's a whole other thing, but with them trying to figure out like, Hey, this, you know, we think this is going to be a thing. This is going to make a lot of money. Like we'll show it here. Look, <laughs> you know, and they showed it to everybody and the reactions seemed to basically be, uh, unanimously believe the hype. Right. Now, I am reflexively circumspect about reactions being so sort of uproarious. Yeah, I would. I'm somewhere in the middle because a lot of times when there's premieres and things like that, you know, you get your sort of the onslaught of Twitter reactions and they're all over the moon because they just were at the Chinese theater and saw, you know, such and such in person. And, you know, there's a little bit of a high that I think comes along with that that elevates reactions gotcha. but um and and there were some pretty high praise for flash right i mean some people even saying it's in the conversation of best superhero movies of all time um not the best but among the best um and i don't know remains to be seen but people did seem to really really like it so that 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 uh comment i'm definitely discounting because i just I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to like it. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, but I think when you say stuff like that, it, 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 it feels a little bit like, Hey, I'm here and I watched this thing that you won't get to see for two months. Ah, uh, sure. Sure. And, and there's, a, I don't, I don't know. May, maybe I'm trying to steal myself because I, I do want this movie to be good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 the one that really got me was someone said it was back to the future meets, uh, spider-man the whatever the last one no way home is that the last one i mean i get them all oh, that was the last far one. from home blah 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 but like i was just like well i like those ingredients <laughs> so if i can if i can feel those feelings that that those things should conjure in me then it sounds like a success and certainly for me i mean this is i'm beyond stoked for you know keaton's return as batman and you know the the new trailer dropped right yeah, what'd you think of that? I, 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 well, I'm into it. I mean, there was a lot of, especially Batman fan servicey stuff, like him saying, <laughs> repeating some of his famous lines from '89, and even like a, a, a callback to the Batwing being silhouetted by the moon, you know. Right. And I was, just, I, you know, sometimes those things happen, and you go, oh, okay, you know. But with that, I just, I probably clapped by myself, <laughs> you know, like in my room. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just so here for that in particular, but what, yeah, what was your re- reaction? I, I think I I'm, I'm on board with the mechanics of the story. It seems, you know, the flashpoint storyline that it's based on. I mean, I know it from yeah. the comic we've used that as sort of the clothesline to sort of hang this thing on, but I, I do. I just wonder if, and this is not, I've, I've said this before, I wonder if every time Michael Keaton's not there, I'm going to be like, where's Michael Keaton? <laughs> right, right, right. Where's Poochie? Where's you know? Poochie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that That's my uh, concern. Sure. And and this is, uh, by all accounts, and you sort of see it in the in the logo at the end, it's meant to sort of tie a bow around, you know, the, 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 the DCEU that started 10 years ago. Um, uh, I I just I don't know if this character, the Flash, this version of this character, has enough, uh, you know, of of a built up investment with audiences that they're going to care. You know, that's going to be really interesting because I mean I I've said this since the very very beginning I've not been crazy about Ezra Miller because I feel right. like the performance has been one of those things where it's like casting someone who's a little older playing a really young enthusiastic person it it just feels not natural to me 
Um, right. And so I've not connected with this version of uh, the Flash, but I. Right. So this movie, in a way, kind of has a lot of heavy lifting to do to make me care, <laughs> you know, about this person yeah. to begin with, and then the whole reason that they would go through what they go through, right? You know, trying to save his parents and whatnot. And so, but I don't, I don't know. I, I've weirdly kind of have an optimistic feeling about it personally. I just, I think just that story alone, like someone wanting a world to exist where their parents are still alive, like that just inherently kind of gets me like, okay, I want that too for them. You know, like, I don't know. Like right, I can, right. I can see that, if that is executed well, I can see that make, you know, getting my emotions charged up. And then, of course, seeing the characters I like. And I don't know. I, I just, it, it, I don't know. I, I'm feeling, yeah, kind of optimistic about it, honestly, as a film. I, I'm maybe I'm just like really bipolar. Like I'm bouncing back and forth depending on what day of the week you catch me. Sure. Um, I, I'm hoping for the best. And, and uh, I know that James Gunn who is incoming head of DC, but had nothing to do with this movie has been quite effusive right in his praise. And, and you try not to read any kind of an agenda into that. Like what does he have to gain by pumping it up? Well, it makes it, you know, it, it keeps the DC brand successful, but you, you try to put that to the side and say, well, I hope it's coming from a genuine place and not mm-hmm. just a uh, need to sell the thing, you know? Right. Right. Uh, well, anyway, I'm sure we'll have more to talk about when, when that movie hits theaters, which is, yeah, just uh, over a month from now, about, about six weeks away. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like all beginning with Guardians, basically, right? Yeah, we got uh, Guardians coming out next week, and then and then the summer movie season begins. We get uh, uh, Fast and Furious mm-hmm. is, is, I think, uh, a Memorial Day weekend or something like that, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, when, when does that when does that uh, come out? I know it's May, and then May, I, I don't May know. May nineteenth the... is is Fast X. Oh, okay. And then the, um, the Little Mermaid. Oh, right, right, right. I know how excited you are for that. <laughs> I should mention, by the way, Brian, that I saw. Uh, speaking of these Disney live action remakes, I watched uh, Peter Pan and Wendy. Yes, which uh, just dropped on Disney Plus, and I got to say, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I saw that I, I, uh, I, where I saw like your little headline of it, or something you posted and I was not even on my radar. Yeah, so. I, yeah. This is David Lowry did this and you know, he did, uh, the green Knight. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he did, uh, a, a movie called a uh, ghost story, uh, which I, mm-hmm. I, I interviewed him for, I, we may have played that audio on this show. I can't remember, but I was just, uh, mesmerized by a ghost story. I've got a while. You recommended it to me also, and I, I still have not seen it. So I really want to hear your thoughts on that. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I find it just haunting and beautiful, but, and he also did for Disney. He did, um, uh, Pete's dragon with, with Robert Redford, which I also really like, which I've heard is great. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it's another one I need to see. And so that like, I'm like, Oh God, do we need another Peter Pan movie? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm like with David Lowry. That's that has me interested, mm-hmm. and I think he made something really, really special. You know, I I I, I really enjoyed it. I the, the reaction sort of leans positive, but you know, I've I've read some some uh, scathing uh, reviews, and I'm like, no, I I don't know. It just worked for me. I I really uh, he he has Jude Law as Captain Hook, mm-hmm. and he gives him this really interesting backstory that connects him to Peter Pan, which I it just really worked for me. You know, I remember there was that, that a uh, couple of years ago called pan. Yes. By Joe Wright, Right. Which had um, Garrett Hedlund as kind of like a Han Solo esque captain hook. Yeah. And this is where they sang, right? Or is that another that, one that, well, the bad guys sing. Yes. Don't they sing like smells like teen spirit or something? Y- yes. The bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and that one didn't really work for me. I mean, I'm definitely like, I, I don't think the world needs any more Peter Pan stories, but this one worked for me. I guess I, I wasn't expecting it to, but I, I ended up enjoying it a lot. Wow. So wait, real quick, what was the thing that people were not enjoying about it? And what was the thing that you think, you know, made you enjoy it? What got its hooks in you? No pun intended, right? Yeah, I actually know. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I think that it is. 
I was going to say dour. I mean, it's not, it's, it's a little more thoughtful, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, introspective, you know, and it was those things that I liked. Yeah. Um, again, the, 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 why does Peter Pan act the way he does and what, what, why do him and Captain Hook have this rivalry, you know? Right. And the, the actor who plays Wendy is, her name is Ever Anderson. And she's the daughter of, of Mila jo- Jovovich. Mm. And if you look at her, you're like, she looks like somebody, you know, she looks like, uh, mom, you know? <laughs> yeah, but she was great. And she's really good. Huh. Um, so I don't know. It just, it just kind of worked for me. You know, I, I, I feel like, I don't know why they, they put, um, uh, they put it on streaming. I feel like this, this would have got a bigger audience if they put it in theaters, you know? Hmm. But I don't uh, know. It's, it's, Maybe for those reasons that it doesn't look as splashy. Well, I know I will use a pun as a little mermaid, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, like it's cool that they allowed him to make this version. That's right. That, some people may be sort of surprised by like, Oh, that was very thoughtful. Like actually I, I am, I am moved by this. I feel stirred by this in a way I did not expect from a Peter Pan film, but knowing, well, if we put something in theaters, it's going to have to be, you know, just the, the metrics we're working with these days, theatrical and what it needs to cost for in and produce. It's gotta be this, you know? Right. Yeah. It's I gotta think be, you're right. I don't know. Yeah. But cool. All right. Uh, well, but- it's on my radar now. So thank you. Uh, in terms of other other uh, uh, releases coming out this summer, I actually didn't realize that we got we got the Spider Man uh, the Spider Verse two coming out. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, the new Transformers, which uh, I God help me, I'm I'm intrigued by that trailer. I feel like after the football has been pulled away this many times by these <laughs> movies, you'd think I'd learn, but uh, it looks good. God help me. I I wish I could say the same. <laughs> I, 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 I saw Bumblebee really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. I feel like a lot of people got, you know, were so burned by the previous transformer films. They did not go to that one much like you, you speak about the second Ninja Turtles film, right? Where people didn't feel a lot for the first one. That's right. So they missed the good one. <laughs> the second one, <laughs> I felt right. that way about Bumblebee. I was like, that was really fun. I, I watched that actually with my family when I visited them and they all liked it too. Um, but I don't know that I'm feeling it ton from this trailer yeah. so i'll need someone to tell me it's good it's you know what what has me intrigued is that it's directed by stephen capel jr who did uh creed 2 and and that by itself is not what intrigues me but i'm like finally you have people making these movies who want to make these movies that is a really good point yeah right because yeah, he is 35 yeah he he he's right in that sweet spot yeah, yeah. Versus Michael Bay, who wanted to make movies about Josh Dumel and was forced to have, uh, you know, uh, transforming robots in them. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, not even Josh Dumel, like generic military guy. Right. And oh yeah, here's some robots too. You know. Right, right. Um, Spielberg told then, me I had to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. You know. Yeah. And then, and then we got we, within a two week span, we got Indy uh, Five, and we have Mission Impossible seven so we're going to be eating well this summer just just oh, right there yeah i keep forgetting about mission impossible honestly i feel like they put a trailer out a while back and obviously yeah. i'm very very excited but i keep forgetting that it's only months away crazy right yeah and, and then of course uh, probably the biggest uh, summer blockbuster which really the entire blockbuster season is going to revolve around uh oppenheimer yeah, <laughs> right. I love much is being made about how that and Barbie are opening on the same day, <laughs> which is hilarious. But uh, uh, I, I just hope we get that shared cinematic universe uh, between those two. Yeah, me too. I 100% would show up for that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I do love that that Ryan Gosling has gone full, like just all in on playing Ken. Oh, totally. Yeah. I I'm excited for Barbie. I think I'm very, very curious. I think I'm getting like Lego movie vibes from it, you know, like a real fun zany kind of thing. So I, I think it could be a lot of fun. Uh, Gosling keeps talking about his Kennergy. <laughs> right. I'm like, there's a guy he, and, and Greta Gerwig. Yeah. Who that's an interesting choice, right? Totally. Yeah. And her and her ex-husband, Noah Bombach, they wrote it together. Greta Gerwig. Yeah, star. Do you remember this? She starred in the 
the How I Met Your Mother. Like before now, the How I Met Your Father, they were going to do How I Met Your Dad. Do you remember this? Did that ever, was that just a pilot or did that was, actually air? I think it was just a pilot. I don't. I do remember that. this. Yeah. And, and it's so weird because like, you know, she would not have this directing career if she was tied up on, on some CBS sitcom. Totally. Totally. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then she, I mean, she's, she's done a lot. I mean, obviously acting wise, she's done a lot of interesting stuff. And then yeah, little women re- most recently. Right. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. It's one of those things, you know, she, she talked about that on some talk show. I can't remember which one about how they shot the pilot and they tested it. And basically the, all the feedback was they hate Greta Gerwig. Really? And I'm like, that has to suck. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like, I don't know what that does to your, to your just general sense of self. Yeah. But it's, it's one of those things too, where you have to like, not take that super personally because it's like, that doesn't mean that you're not good. It's like this thing, like you might not fit into that thing correctly, but like put her behind the camera making a Barbie movie. And it's like a huge hit. Like you are, you are good. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like being measured against things that maybe aren't necessarily your fault. Does that make sense? It absolutely does. Yeah. You know, it's like, sliding doors sort of situation. It's like, you can feel like you're not succeeding at something like, Oh, it's, it's all my fault. Why this thing didn't work. It's like, well, no, like once you find that thing that you're like truly suited for, you're going to fly, you know? Right. And so, but that doesn't mean it doesn't sting in the moment. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. Yeah. But I, that's uh, awesome. And, I'm really happy for, her. uh, yeah. So, so, and by the way, uh, Noah Baumbach is her current partner. They are not exes. Oh, I thought, I thought they were like exes and that's where marriage story came from. Um, it says here in December, 2022, Gerwig announced that she was expecting her second child with, with Bombach. So wow. hey, as if, good, as good if for those kids, <laughs> those crazy kids. <laughs> um, uh, so Barbie. Yeah. So Barbie and Oppenheimer. Yeah. And Oppenheimer, I'm so curious about this because I mean, Nolan himself has become, I was going to say against all odds. And I don't know if, I mean, whoever makes like the greatest Batman movie of all time is going to buy like eternal cachet probably, but he makes Dunkirk too, you know, (laughs) like, and those aren't necessarily, necessarily crowd pleasers. Right. But people show up because no one is a brand that people like and trust. And Oppenheimer looks dour, (laughs) you know? So I'm, I'm very curious in the middle of summer, how that, that movie's going to do. But, uh, I, I got to be honest, Brian. I, I kind of wish we lived in the universe where uh, we're getting Greta Gerwig's Oppenheimer and Christopher <laughs> Nolan's Barbie. <laughs> that's that's what I want to see. You know, I would take that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there'd be like some sort of ticking clock motif in Barbie, and you know, like she's gonna <laughs> it'd be told somewhat out of order. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little disappointed we're not getting that, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we'll be talking about those in a couple months. Uh, here's some other news, Brian. This is some sad news. There has yeah. been a passing of late in the last couple of days. Uh, Jerry Springer has 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 uh, left the building, and by building, I mean this mortal plane. It's kind of that was kind of a weird one, wasn't it? I mean, he's yeah. yeah go ahead. I I don't know how I felt about. It. I mean, as a human being, I'm sad, and by all accounts, he was a nice person. Mm-hmm. But. I don't know what I think of the legacy he left behind. Yeah, I, I can, I, I think I get on board with that. Yeah. I mean, do you want to elaborate? Well, I, you know, for, for those of you who don't know, and I'm assuming if you listen to this show, you're, you're at least familiar, you know, Jerry Springer had this talk show in the, in the nineties, which initially it started as kind of a public affairs thing. You know, J- Jerry Springer was a former mayor of Cincinnati famously, he got into trouble because uh, he he uh, had been spending time with a uh, a, a, a lady of the night, let's say, <laughs> and he paid with a check, which you know you shouldn't do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm no expert on that subject, but yeah, seems, paper trails seems to me, yeah. So yeah. anyway, he gets his talk show. Uh, the public affairs thing isn't working, and then they start bringing on you know. Uh, illegitimate uh, the sisters sleeping with the uh, uh, husbands and whatever else. You know, I don't know what's going on. 
Well, it, and, it was also like the KKK, like that whole thing where it's like, let's bring out the KKK and then like, I don't know, like whoever else. And like, let's, we know this is going to end in a fist fight on stage, right? Like chairs are going to fly. Like that became like kind of his brand, right? Very much so. Yeah. People cheering uh, yes. his name, right? Yes. And, and so this show just rocketed to the top of the pop culture conversations. And, and so in a sense, we look back with some nostalgia colored glasses and we're like, remember those days when, you know, good old Jerry Springer, you know, uh, the, the, those, those, uh, uh, candy colored, uh, days of yesteryear <laughs> when Jerry Springer would, would have uh, various people in different forms of bondage gear. And then he'd have his final thought about being <laughs> his final thought, yes. and each other, you know, <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, he was he was uh, invoking like so. It's like at the time when we were in high school, I think we'd never seen anything like that, and we're like teenagers, and it was outrageous, and it felt almost like rebellious and crazy and fun and funny and and whatnot. And I think the older you get, you sort of like, oh, that was toxic. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, know, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this might not have been like great for those. I'm sure some people not, you know, susceptible people like being on television and then just being exploited, you know, and then yeah. also just what it ushered in to culture and, and to daytime TV and, and beyond. I, right? I mean, that whole you talk about like the three gates of hell, Jerry Springer, Jenny Jones and Maury Povich. <laughs> My brother and I were just talking about, I think it was Maury Povich where it was like, or maybe it was Jenny Jones, where there was just this like year where it was always like an unruly kid. And then they would bring out these drill instructors yeah, yeah. who would just like come in and get in the face like, you maggot, blah, 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 you know, that kind of thing. And then the kid would like suddenly be like, I'm sorry, mom. And then like the yeah. whole audience would be like, oh, you know, <laughs> that was like an era of daytime yeah. TV. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's. It's so weird because because it typifies like the way culture worked in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I would say up until the 90s, really, where everything flowed into certain troughs, mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak. Right. Right. Versus now. I mean, it's just it, you know, every it's just everywhere is a sewage dump, you know? Yeah, it's funny when you say with Maury, too. I mean, Maury's kind of the, you are not the father, you know? And then That's someone right. starts, like, tap dancing on stage and a woman runs off crying. That's right. And it, you know, and it's just sort which, of like... Which, which, when you take a step backward, how exactly. entirely awful is that whole tableau? Yeah, yeah. And and I think if I... Uh, this is what you're saying, is like it kind of... He was sort of like the first person, the crack in the dam, you know? Where it's like, if Oprah was like daytime TV, he was like, wouldn't it be kind of funny if... You know, yeah, and, and it's, it's it provoked, yeah, springery, and yeah. then it just all so the dam burst, and then it just became sort of human misery for entertainment. Yeah, and and so so Springer. Now, to his credit, he was he he never had any illusions about what he was doing. He's not like, hey, we're illuminating, you know, some truth about human nature. Although he kind of was. I mean, uh, try I tried, like you said, his final thought at the end. Yeah, right. but I mean, he he was like, "Look, we're not going to do the type of show Oprah does." So I almost I applaud the the uh, you know transparency of it all, but it's impossible not to look at what started there and look at where we're at now, mm -hmm. and say, "Well, I, did Jerry Springer make society better or worse?" <laughs> right. And and I don't even I don't know, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, I think that, I don't know, you know, I, I, you, you have an opportunity to have, you have a microphone in front of you, you have a camera pointed at you, you can do something mm -hmm. to make a difference, either for good sure. or for ill, right? You know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, as we're recording this, this week or this past week, Tucker Carlson got shit canned at Fox News, right? Right. And like, that's a conversation. People are like, oh my God, you know, because he was like the top rated cable show, period. It's crazy, but yeah, it's nuts, right? And he got he got shit canned, and and I was talking about it with my brother, and I was like, "Here's the thing, like like or dislike Tucker Carlson, it was the time slot that was the top rated. Mm. So before him, it was Bill O'Reilly mm. in that same slot. And what's Bill O'Reilly doing now? 
I have no idea. Yeah, yeah that's my point. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and, you know, like, uh, here's another example. Rush Limbaugh, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he, I don't even know how, when he died, a couple of years ago, right? And it, uh, it's yeah. like, the minute he died, people stopped thinking about him. Sure. Because, because he didn't contribute anything. You know what I mean? He contributed nastiness. Right. Right. And just toxic discourse. And he, the second he's gone, somebody else is doing it and, and takes the that? mantle. You know? Yep. Yeah. It takes the mantle, you know? And, and I'm like, that's sad. Like, I can't imagine that being my legacy. Right. Right. You just, spent, you just stirred things and made everybody yeah. agitated and yeah. 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 And so by, by, by that metric, you say, well, Jerry Springer seemed like an affable guy and, and you know, I, I don't put him on that same level, but on the other hand, did he make society better? I did not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, and, and yeah. that's, that's my final thought, Ryan. So <laughs> well, then I'm not going to argue with that. And each other. <laughs> Zachy, Zachy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying I didn't mean to cut you. No, no. No, oh, I just had like a little, uh, remember they even made a movie? Yeah, yeah, it was called uh, Ringmasters. Ringmasters. I never saw yeah. it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's how big he was. Oh, we Jerry Springer starring in a movie. Yeah, and he was in the third Austin Powers, I think. And so weird. What a, yeah. what a he's on The Simpsons. Yeah. Remember that? Like one of the Halloween yeah. episodes, Kane and Kodos, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the with the where the like Kodos is uh, uh, Maggie's dad or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. the The thing is, his show ended in 2018. Wow, Which, I did not know right? that. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? I would have. I would have believed like 2006. No, nope. something. Yeah, and him, Maury Povich, both those guys just ended relatively recently. Wow, that's amazing. And I'm like, God damn. There, there is. Um, if you go to Hulu, there's a series there called "The Dark Side of the '90s," um, and there's an ep- episode about '90s talk shows, <laughs> uh, and it's actually really worth watching. I think they, I think uh, they got Springer as a talking head on there. It's actually yeah. really good. worth Worth a look. I'll, I'll, well, I mean, you, you had me at 90, so I'll probably yeah, check it out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so check that out. Yeah. Uh, speaking of leaving the building, uh, this time not the mortal plane, Brian, is uh, James Corden. Yeah. Yeah. Leaving his uh, late night station, right? Now, now, if you were to follow the media conversation about James Corden leaving the late, late show right. after, I think, eight years, uh-huh. you would think that Johnny Carson came back to life and died again. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Based on how, Oh my God, this, what a, what a loss. Really? And, I've, I've not been seeing, I've not been following this. I should say, I, I know I'm aware of the headline, but I, uh, I, I'm just like, I've yet to meet an actual living, breathing human being who watched the James Corden show. Well, it's funny. Cause I think he had like bits that went viral, right? Where you had the carpool karaoke, and uh, and that sort of thing. And I mean, those were no doubt huge, um, you know, performers, at least online and people being aware of them. But uh, I, it's funny because it feels like recently there was sort of like a negative dis- discourse around him where, you know, he was at some restaurant, was treating the staff kind of rudely. Right. And that that's became right. a whole f- story for like a week. Um, that, so that's interesting. In cats, which didn't have his, his <laughs> rep just in general. Right. I mean, I'm not a fan, but I don't not being a fan, I don't even really have that much of a relationship with him. To I, I have mean, I'm, feelings. I'm neutral on the subject of James Corden as a person, Same. but I mean, I mean, let's be real. No, nobody was watching network television at, <laughs> at, you know, 1230 at night to the extent that the, this is a, an opportunity to talk about how, you know, the era of late night television is over. Well, who's, who's saying this? Is this Twitter or is this like articles this like, coming out? Yeah. This is like serious, uh, you know, think pieces, you know? Huh. And and I'm like I I don't dispute that l- late night is is a far cry from what it was you know certainly 30 years ago when when yeah. you had like uh, Letterman and Leno going at it or even before that when it was just Carson but but I'm like the 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 metrics of what goes viral maybe maybe that's what it is like uh the the audience for carpool karaoke is just bigger than I would have ever thought ah uh, yeah I have no idea I mean <laughs> right. There's, I, you know, I am continually fascinated. I'll be watching something or SNL or something. There'll be a musical guest or, and I'm like, oh, I don't know who that is. And then I'll look them up on Instagram and they have 60 million followers. 
And I'm like, oh, OK, that's on me. <laughs> like, so I who knows? I have no idea. I mean, maybe. Yeah. Through those sorts of things, it, it may not even be television ratings. It could just be through whatever sort of things he puts out on YouTube. There's, yeah, some huge following for that that I'm just not a part of. But I, I mean, the the economics of this don't even make sense because because uh, per uh, 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 Los Angeles magazine, the show cost about sixty five million to make. How? To produce. Yeah, right. Like how? There's a set every it, day, and, <laughs> and you pay you. Let's just be generous and say you're paying the uh, the the host twenty million dollars. Sure. Okay, where's the other forty five? Right. I know. I mean, they don't make money, right? Guests on that. No, I think they get like fruit money. baskets and stuff, but yeah, I don't. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but even then, the show itself was was taking in forty five million. Hmm. So economically, this this was not sustainable. Which fascinates me even more: the fact that Corden had apparently been offered fifty million dollars to continue. I would assume for like two to three years, probably some kind of, but, but he turned that down, which, Hey, God bless. You know, if you can turn down 50 million, then, then, you know, you get what you're worth. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure. Like I'm not, that's not, I'm like, Hey, good. Uh, I, I be, I know me, Brian, I definitely would not turn down 50 million and I would have to do far less than host a nightly talk show. <laughs> right. You know, um, uh, my dignity would be much, <laughs> you know, <laughs> up for grabs for for much lower rates than, than fifty million. Just being honest, <laughs> knowing myself as I do. Um, but the the sense of like late night talk, like I I think that is undeniable that it's not what it used to be. But yeah. I, I'm I'm kind of like if if that's the economic like like late late show if they're spending sixty five million a year, I have to imagine the other shows spend more. Yeah, right, like a, a Fallon or something. Yeah, I mean, how much do you think it costs to keep the the Ed Sullivan Theater mm-hmm. <laughs> running? You know, with with Colbert. So right. that that I am interested in that. Like, what what are the economics of these shows? Yeah, I have, I not what I imagined. Apparently, <laughs> do you stay up late and watch these shows? No. Yeah. Um. I mean, nobody does. I don't know. I have no hard feelings about them. I just, which is funny though, because it it seems weird, but like as teenagers, yeah, I mean, we did, we stayed up, you know, you and I, like we would watch Conan O'Brien, you know, we Mm -hmm. would, it didn't matter who the guest was. Conan was funny, That's right. you know, and, uh, and Letterman and, you know, Arsenio and all the Carson, like I watched all that stuff, you know, like, but yeah, like now it does feel, I remember when, when Fallon started. I just didn't feel, you know, I just never connected with it, but like, it would be like, Hey, let's have Tom Cruise come out and play a game called like truth or spaghetti down your pants, you know? And like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and it was like these games where, you know, you just, he would be with these huge superstars playing these crazy, ridiculous games with, you know, spraying stuff on each other and whatnot. And I don't know. I I almost kind of felt bad for the guests. I was like, look, you just, you spent three months making a movie and now you got to go out here and get hit in the face with a pie, you know, like do they want to <laughs> do this, but in a way it kind of makes sense because then you create this, you're making viral moments. That's right. You know, you have these a list celebrities at your fingertips here. And so you can do this and make these YouTube clips or Instagram clips that are TikTok clips, you know, like that's kind of what it's become. Right. And so I, I wonder if it, it almost is more popular online than it is even at night on a network. I, I have to imagine that's the only thing that, that, that keeps the, the stuff going because, because more and more, I mean, every single late night show, they upload their monologue and their bits by like 5 PM Pacific time. Mm. Oh, before it airs, before it airs. Whoa. Well, though, that interesting? There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, clearly they're counting more on that audience than the other mm-hmm. audience. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, if, when we were kids, I remember staying up and watching, you know, Beyondo or whatever stupid uh, <laughs> Jay Leno, you know, Mister Mister Muscles or whatever that guy was. Jaywalking, <laughs> jaywalking, yeah, exactly. Yeah, or headlines. That was a big one. Uh, headlines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that that being said, there is a sketch. I don't know if you saw this that that Corden did. 
either for his last show or the week before or, or the week of it's uh, him and all the other late night hosts. Do you see this? No, it's actually really funny. So we're checking out it's, you know, you got Seth Meyers and, and Kimmel and Fallon and Colbert. They all showed up and I was like, you know, it's nice. Oh, and Letterman. And it's nice that, mm. uh, we're not doing the late night war thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, it was, it was a cute little, little thing that you, that you might, you might enjoy. Yeah. Okay. I'll check it out. I've seen the, uh, the bits where he's with Tom Cruise and he's in the jet and those sorts of things. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one would imagine that one or two of those going viral every couple months is enough to justify the effort of doing all the other ones. Right. Yeah. I would you know, imagine, you know, uh, but, but Hey, James Corden's, uh, uh, late night, uh, a talk show r.i.p yeah yeah curious what will say, uh yeah <laughs> i was gonna say it will be missed uh no it won't <laughs> it, it won't <laughs> uh that being said i think that wraps up our discussions uh, for this episode what do you think i think so this was great man i really enjoyed this yeah yeah uh we will be back however brian this is a promise that has been made to our audience and by gum we will keep it uh (laughs) we we will be back to drop our commentary track for the last jedi it is happening yep in in time for may the 4th so so look for that to happen people have been messaging me excited like when is it coming i've seen these yes (laughs) happy and and nervous both because yeah. uh, we got to measure up. we got to measure up. But uh, if you have any questions or comments for us about anything we've talked about this episode or anything else, please uh, message us at moviefilmpodcast at gmail.com. You can also hit like on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash moviefilmpodcast and message us there. Uh, Brian, what about you? What, what, what do you have going on? Where can people find you? I'm I'm thrilled to full throated finally be able to say that Young Jedi Adventures is coming out on May the 4th on Disney Junior and Disney Plus. Uh is an awesome show. I think, you know, your kids are going to love it. Like this is, this is meant to be like an on-ramp for kids to the star Wars universe. And I think it absolutely lives up to that and more. And I think it's going to get kids really excited about it. And I think what's really cool is that it's a show that parents are going to enjoy watching. Also, I think the characters are really fun. The adventures are great. It's, it's humorous. It's heartfelt. It's adventurous. Um, I'm very, very proud to be a, a part of it. So may the 4th, Young uh, Jedi Adventures, Disney Junior, Disney Plus. And just remember, if you if you want to get uh, emotionally invested in uh, the the kids that Anakin Skywalker <laughs> murders, uh, this is where to jump in. So I was going to say, you're going to need to find another show. You're going to need oh, to find another show. Yeah, <laughs> Different show, different show. Not this one. <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> it's, it'll be the, the, the sequel series to this. Eventually, eventually we'll get there. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're, they're great grandkids or something. I don't know. <laughs> But <laughs> Brian, you can't say so. That's canon now. Like people are, that's going to be a headline. <laughs> no, but the, the Brian's views and statements do not represent that of Disney or Lucasfilm. <laughs> that's about to be a slash film headline, right? Nope. There. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as for me, you can find me at the San Francisco Chronicle where my uh, movie reviews go up uh, pretty regularly. You can read my review of Evil Dead Rise and uh, Peter Pan and Wendy and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. All of those are up and I got a couple other pieces uh, as well. You can also find me at IGN and The Wrap. Uh, lots of stuff happening. And of course, you can always find me on Twitter and other social media. Just search for Zachy's Corner. That's the A-K-I-S Corner. And I'm always happy to answer any questions or comments or anything else. Uh, as always, please go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Leave a star rating if you like what we're doing. Let other people know. And we obviously, we appreciate the feedback as well. Uh, with that, on behalf of my partner, Brian Hall, my name is Zachy Hassan. And this has been Movie Film. 268 we'll catch you next time thanks everybody welcome friends it's the movie film podcast and podcast enjoy the show Zachy and Brian are talking about the movie it's the movie film podcast on the radio with lucky landslots you can get lucky just about anywhere dearly beloved we are gathered here today to has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Lucky! 
Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.